Hey, Maddie, we work a lot with bariatric people and think a lot about bariatric medicine. And as a doctor and also a yoga teacher, what do you think are some of the root causes of how people get into this situation of morbid obesity? Is it a nutrition issue? Nutrition has a lot to do with it. As uh, my main yoga teacher <laughs> likes to say, the American diet is a nightmare. And by that I mean the, the typical American diet is extremely high in processed food. And um, it typically is very high in gluten. It's very high in high fructose corn syrup. And all of that high fructose corn syrup comes mostly from genetically modified corn. Uh, it's high in artificial sweeteners, and it's high in sugar and things that typically slow down your metabolism. And as a result of getting your metabolism slowed down, that starts a slow incremental process of adding more and more weight on. And the, the really tragic thing to me is, is that it's happening in kids that are getting mm. exposed to these awful diets at a really young age. Yes, and there's even an addictive quality to those kinds of processed foods and that they're very high in sort of the bad fats and salt, refined salt, and the sugar that sort of makes particularly kids want to eat more and more because they're not getting the nutrition that their bodies crave mm -hmm. that they would be getting from eating organic fresh foods and fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So other than nutrition, what do you think about the emotional components of obesity? It's huge. It's, it's uh, so important. And the, you know, every single person is different. Everyone has different emotions, but in general, all emotions are painted sort of from a, a similar palette, you could say. And I find that with so many people who I work with that are bariatric patients, they'll tell me, I haven't been hungry in years, but I tend to eat to overcome anxiety and stress that I have. And it's a socially acceptable mm -hmm. thing to do when you're stressed out to eat. And uh, if you eat and the food that you're getting is you know, extremely not nourishing, then y you end up eating more and more and more. So the emotions really feed into that cycle. Yes. And do you have any other thoughts on that? The other thought I have is I think there's a guilt associated with it, which is another emotion, but there's that sort of anxiety and then guilt of like, well, I just ate, you know, a half a carton of Haagen-Dazs mm -hmm. or whatever. Now I feel even worse about myself and more anxious. So it's just a cycle that, that uh, uh, if you stopped and did a little breathing and did a little yoga, conceivably you could actually interrupt that cycle, which leads us to the sort of, to the topic of lifestyle modification and how how and if that is successful to help people who have morbid obesity and what do we think about that and what do you think about that as a yogi and a doctor so the i guess the first part of that question is sort of like the science of bariatric medicine and what they found is when people get to a certain uh, relationship between their weight and their height and we call that the body mass index mm -hmm. And sort of between 30 and 40, what happens is people start to get more and more diseases that are quote unquote associated with obesity. And so uh, some of those are things that would kind of make sense to you, like arthritis, because they have more and more weight and so it's just a stress on the joints. But the real classic ones are hypertension, sleep apnea, and diabetes. And they're pervasively common in that population at that weight. And the higher your weight goes, the more of those you tend to get, and then the, the worse the severity of those diseases. And those are typically associated with heart disease. <laughs> so it, it really becomes something where people have a lot of risk factors, so much so that they found that if they did a relatively dangerous surgery, the gastric bypass, or in some cases, the gastric band, that have morbidity where people die from the surgery, it turns out that the morbidity of the surgery was less than living at a weight of, let's say, 250, 300 pounds with diabetes. 
because they found that in people who lost the weight, those diseases of obesity would go away. And so even though there's a whole lot of complications of the surgery and a whole lot of issues that you have to deal with for the entire rest of your life from having that surgery, follow-up surgeries, it becomes some, in many cases sort of a never-ending process of being in the medical system. That still is safer than living at a really heavy weight with diabetes. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Plus the, the other diseases you say, like arthritis that are related just to the weight, those kind of diseases go, tend to go away as well as you lose the weight. So to some, think, extent. to some extent. To some extent. But of course there's movement and more physical activity you do. That's going to help with those as well. For instance, bariatric yoga. Right. It's very good for all those kind of joint diseases. So in... So in medicine, we're, we're weighing risks and benefits. The, we're weighing the risk of, in, in bariatric medicine of surgery versus living at a really heavy weight with all of these diseases. The interesting thing is they've done a lot of research on lifestyle modifications. And in general, that research basically shows that lifestyle modifications have not really worked that well in the studies that they did. And these were well-designed studies, studies where they do things, they have people start an exercise program, they have dietary programs for them. We have a billion dollar weight loss, you know, yes. industry that is, would love to step in and be the, you know, any company would love to be the company that could solve the obesity epidemic. Uh, and none of those have really worked. Why do you think that is? Well, it's a multifactorial problem. You know, bariatric medicine is, uh, has all of these different factors. There's the emotional factor. There's the psychological factor. There's the, the dietary factor of the diet. The American diet is, they call it the standard American diet because mm. it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> and so all of these pieces are, is, uh, are, powerful pieces and it's difficult and that's why bariatric medicine is a multidisciplinary field but as we were talking uh my my greatest teacher really in my life arkady uh we had this ep epiphany like five years ago when I, re I realized he's not that interested in teaching yoga i mean he's more interested in teaching yoga than anybody else that i know but what he really wanted to do was completely change, you know, our lives in, in, in every way from sort of, you know, the moment you wake up until the end of the day. And I think ultimately it takes that level of focus to really achieve something great in your personal practice. And so I sort of have gotten to the point of that's sort of my focus in my life is my practice and if you can make that your focus i think with lifestyle modification with that type of modification you actually can overcome any problem any problem any problem at all whether that be you know a disease or you know morbid obesity and so to me, that's sort of an inspiration, but it seems like a lot to chew off. It's daunting. It sounds daunting. <laughs> it sounds though. daunting. You're going to change your life. But one of the things that I found, and I find with my yoga students, but I've definitely found in my own practice, is that it's like Lao Tzu said, the longest journey begins with the ground under your feet and the first step that you take. There's lots of different versions of that quote. Uh -huh. But I love the idea of starting where you are. Yeah. And moving ahead, and if that's a and if that's a ten minute yoga practice that you do a couple times a day, and that helps you feel a little more emotionally calm, so you're mm -hmm. not as triggered to eat, and maybe you sleep a little better, and you find your breathing is a little better, and then you lose ten pounds. Now you're more comfortable. Now you're able to do a little more yoga. It's just a gradual, gradual process. So. I, you know, we used to say, well, it's not rocket science, because that used to be sort of the thing that sounded hardest. Mm -hmm. Now I would probably say something more like nanotechnology or something, but it's, it's not nanotechnology. <laughs> but there is a science to it, and yoga has thousands of years of science mm -hmm. behind it. And it's, but it's very simple in that it's building blocks, and it starts out slowly. And that's, that's what I think our philosophy is with bariatric yoga, is to start with these simple building blocks. 
start with some breathing, start it's emotionally calming and that helps get you more aware of your body. Start with some simple exercises and make, you know, for two weeks, try not eating sugar and see how you feel at the end of that. Mm -hmm. And sort of learn about your body and learn about how to change your lifestyle because it's not for us to say, you're somebody with three kids and you work full time. It's not for us to say how you should live your life because you've got a lot of priorities. But you can start developing that awareness and making those small changes. And then eventually you all of a sudden realize, wow, my life is completely different now than it was a year ago. And I feel a lot better about it. Yeah, that's sort of the, the that's a beautiful thing. And no matter what tradition you're in, whether it's yoga or Qigong or Tai Chi, there's thousands of years of common sense in every good tradition, <laughs> you know, whether the, from the Native Americans on down. And so... Even in Western medicine, there's some common sense. There's a little say? bit of, <laughs> there's a tiny <laughs> bit of common sense in Western medicine. And so what, uh, what your job then becomes is just to sort of, with sort of an intelligent sort of uh, focus, start to add these little things to your practice and kind of have fun with it. And then the next thing you know, you've got a pretty cool practice. 